Hi, I'm Bob Tabor with www.learnvisualstudio.net where I teach beginners the skills that they need in order to get their first software development job building Windows and web apps at the world's best companies as quickly as possible. In this lesson, I'm going to install the free edition of Visual Studio named Visual Studio Express uh, that you can use to follow along with the rest of this course. If you already have some edition of Visual Studio 2013 or greater installed, such as Express or Professional, Premium, or Ultimate, then you can skip this lesson and continue on to the next one where we build our first app. Also, if you're adept at installing your own software, then I'm willing to bet that you could probably figure this out on your own. Okay. Like I said, the free edition Visual Studio Express can always be downloaded from Microsoft.com slash Express and it will forward you to the right page. It happens to look like this now, but they change it up occasionally, so don't be jarred if it looks a little bit different. Uh, and on this page, you're going to quickly come to realize that there's not just one free Express edition, but there's several. And you're going to choose the one that you need based on the platform, or rather, depending on the type of application that you want to build. So, for example, if you scroll down on this page, there's Express 2013 for Web, Express 2013 for Windows, Express 2013 for Windows Desktop, uh, and Express 2013 for, where are you? There you are, Windows Phone. Uh, and so, this is vitally important. You need Express 2013 for Windows Desktop. If you do not have this free edition of Visual Studio installed, then you won't be able to follow along with me as we work through the exercises in this series. Now, if you already have Professional, Premium, or Ultimate, all those editions uh, have all application types available from your single Visual Studio installation. But that's not the case with the free edition Visual Studio Express. There are other differences as well, but generally you're only going to need the professional edition or greater once you learn C Sharp and .NET and you need some advanced features or whenever you're working with a team of developers. So a common mistake that new developers make whenever they're attempting to follow along in this series is that they mistakenly download Express 2013 for Windows instead of for Windows Desktop. So you would use the Windows edition for building store apps, you know, like the Windows Store. And we have a whole series about that on Channel 9 and then also on uh, Microsoft Virtual Academy if you're interested in that. Uh, but we're going to use, let's get back to the desktop, we're going to use, where are you? There you are. Express 2013 for Windows Desktop to create simple console window applications in this course. So locate the Express 2013 for Windows Desktop Edition and then you'll click the download link and you'll uh, you'll see a panel revealed that describes more about Visual uh, Studio Express 2013 for Windows Desktop. Uh, in this panel you'll also have several options uh, whether uh, your download languages prefer to be English or something else, whether you want to uh, would want to install the DVD or uh, just the uh, the little installer. So in ISO, this DVD5 ISO image, uh, it's basically just a DVD image that includes all the features, even those that you may not need, and therefore it might take a little bit longer to download. So honestly, I recommend that you choose that first option by selecting the Install Now link. Alright, that'll take you to another page uh, that would ask you to uh, potentially log in as you can see, I'm already logged in, but if I wasn't, I would see a page that looks like, like this, asking me to, to log in. So I'm gonna go ahead, log in. And then I'll have the option to uh, either download the Express 2013 for Windows Desktop or Ultimate. Uh, and I wouldn't recommend this one yet because it's a time trial. So let's just go ahead and choose Express 2013 for Windows Desktop. Uh, if you're using Windows Explorer, you're going to be asked whether you want to save the installer or run it. Typically, I just click the Run uh, button, but you might choose to uh, click Save if you think you'll need to install it again in the future. So when the installer begins, you're going to have the option of uh, installing onto a different folder or drive. I generally generally leave the default locations alone. However, you might want to change this if you're running out of room on your primary hard drive. You're also going to be asked to 
uh, read and agree to the license terms and the privacy policy by clicking the checkbox. And uh, once you've agreed to the terms, then you want to click the big install button at the very bottom of the dialog. Uh, because Visual Studio will need to modify some of the settings of your operating system and your file system, then you're going to be presented with a UAC, User Account Control Dialog, asking for permission. So we want to click the Yes button. And so next, the setup application will begin to create a system restore point, which is a standard installation procedure to allow you to get back to your computer settings prior to the installation if something goes wrong. And then it'll start to download the relevant components of Visual Studio onto your computer. So I have a pretty fast internet connection, uh, and still this takes about 10 minutes to go through. So you might want to take a quick break while you're waiting for this and come back in a few minutes. Okay, so once everything's been set up successfully, then you're going to see the successful setup message in the setup application. And we will want to click that launch button here at the bottom of the window to start Visual Studio. And here again, we're going to ask to sign into Visual Studio. This time it explains you're going to gain some benefits from signing in. However, you can skip this step if you want to uh, with that little link below the sign in button. Uh, I'm a conformist, so I will click the sign in button. I will put in my account. And uh, as you can see, Visual Studio will search online and set up this copy of Visual Studio according to my previous preferences. And after a moment or so, I see the Start Page tab loaded in the main area of Visual Studio, indicating that I'm ready to get started. So now we are ready to write our first lines of code in C Sharp. In the very next lesson, we'll see you there. Thank you.